All right, this is your brother Aisha Yarn coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstones I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth with the truth and sincerity. And shalom to the aqua that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled, Do You Really Want to Be Part of the Lord's Indignation? All right. Do you really want to be part of the Lord's indignation? Now I got inspired to do this lesson because this video that I uploaded about two weeks ago, and I was gonna speak on this around that time, but I know the Passover was coming up and then the spirit got upon me to do and speak about other things, all right? But now, you know, the spirit is upon me to speak about this. And um, the Passover first, uh, the Passover ends tomorrow night when uh, tomorrow evening hits, the Passover will be over, which is Feast of Unleavened Bread. And, and it's, here it is. <laughs> Feast of Unleavened Bread ends tomorrow sundown. This is from the Apostle Aramla, GMS Info Doc Channel 12. Definitely go subscribe to his channel if you haven't yet. All right, but uh, just want to put that out there that the Passover does end tomorrow night. And pretty much, you know, you can go back to eating uh, regular again, you know, go back to eating bread, go back to eating things, things with yeast, so forth and so on. All right. And then, of course, it's also um, the beginning of the Sabbath. All right. Because the Sabbath right now is Saturday to Sunday. OK, so it's two things going on tomorrow. All right. The Passover ends, but the Sabbath begins. All right. But um, going back into this lesson right here. I entitled this video, this is what a nuclear attack would look like. And um, since we in the spirit of the Passover, you know, one of the reasons why we keep the Passover and we rehearse the righteous acts in the first place is because we want to avoid this. We want to avoid the nuclear destruction and we want salvation because we already know how devastating, how horrible and how brutal it's going to be, man. We do not want to be a part of this. When I saw this video, you know, me and the brother, we was we, uh, last time we was at camp, we were speaking about this. And we was like, damn, man, you know, one of those missiles contains about 15 or 20 warheads. And the scriptures tell you that, the, you know, America's going to be destroyed with 200 million missiles, meaning the warheads, man. So when you actually see those warheads come out of that missile and then just, just destroy everything in this path, it's very scary, man, all right? And this is why we trying to avoid this, and this is why we do this work, and this is why we give the warning, because this time is at hand, man. Jacob's trouble is right around the corner. There's a lot of things going on in this year already, and it's only the month of March, all right? Things could happen this year, we'll see. But we already know it's close. We are months away, like Apostle Tahar said, we are months away, whether it's you know, six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. That's it. You know, we are months away. This is not a thing where we're going to be here for a very long time. The signs I hear, all right, the most High showing us that he's getting ready to bring change in the earth. And we got to be prepared for that, man. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and play just a small clip so you can see what this nuclear destruction will look like. And this is what we're trying to avoid. All right. So let's go ahead and play it.
right, so there it is, man. That's a very scary scenario right there, man. All right, those missiles just wiped out everything within seconds. And you know, it all makes sense because the scriptures tell us that America's gonna be destroyed within one hour. Man, those missiles gonna hit and, and it's just gonna happen so fast, man. People just gonna be doing whatever, just like you saw in the video, people driving, People gonna be chilling in the crib. They're gonna be at restaurants. They're gonna be playing in the park, doing whatever it is that you know that they're doing for that day. And next thing you know, it's just gonna hit them out of nowhere. And that's why the scriptures say the day of the Lord is gonna come as a thief in the night. People are not gonna expect it. It's just gonna just boom, just out of nowhere. There's a straight up blast, and everything is gonna be completely wiped out, man. You could just imagine just driving on a bridge or just driving somewhere and then the next thing you know, a big blast has hit you. You don't even know what to do. You don't know what to think. You don't know what's even happening. All you know is you doomed because you feeling pain, man. You just got blown up. Then the next thing you know, you 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 know, uh uh you could have been pierced or whatever, whatever by the glass. If you was in the car, you got stuck somewhere, the car flip over and land some type of awkward way and next thing you know you in all type of pain you can't do nothing you just over there that's feeling that man and then the most side like it ain't over yet here comes the fire then he burns you then he burns you and you don't know how long the most is gonna keep your spirit within your body when that happens so this is why we continue to give out this warning over and over and over and over again especially now like i said this is the week of the passover this is what we want we want the most high to pass over us. Well, not, no, we don't want the most high to pass over us. <laughs> we want to pass over this destruction that's getting ready to happen. We want the chariots to beam us up, man, so we can get away from this. Because this ain't going to be, this is not going to be a, a pretty day at all, man. There's a lot of jakes out there, and a lot of people believe that this won't happen. They don't believe that a nuclear attack could happen in this world. They don't believe that something this drastic can happen to the point where they'll literally be like, yeah, we're going to shoot missiles on a certain country and wipe everybody out. They don't think something like that can happen. Because America has got a lot of these people just in this funk, man. It has got them in this belief where they just feel like, no, we're going to continue to just go on and live. We're going to be all right. We got past the year 2000. We got past 2020. We got past the recession back when George Bush was in office. All of these different things. We're going to be all right. The, the presidents ain't going to make a mistake to the point where they're going to allow Russia to shoot missiles over here, man. You got to be a bugged out individual if you got that type of mindset, man. It's in the air. It's in the air. Russia and these different countries are sending threats to America damn near every day now, man. We are that close. There are certain countries that's telling them that they're getting ready to prepare them for a draft. Every, and all of these things are going to come here to America, man. It will come here to America. Let's start off with Sirach chapter 10. Go to verse 12. It says, The beginning of pride is when one departed from the Mosai, and his heart is turned away from his maker. Verse 13, it says, For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath this shall pour out abomination. And therefore the Lord brought upon them a strange calamity and overthrew them utterly. So that's one thing you have to get rid of is your pride, all right? You got to stop thinking for yourself. You got to stop thinking that whatever, whatever type of way that you live in, that's the correct way to live and nobody can't tell you shit. You got to get out that mindset, man, all right? And this is speaking to you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, of course, because these scriptures are not for everybody. And even on this side, it's not even for the majority. It's not even for all Israelites. It's not even for all of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. It's only for the elect right now. All right? That's it. So if you come across these videos, you got to get rid of that pride. All right? You got to get rid of that pride because it is the beginning of sin. And what does sin get you? It gets you death. And one of the greatest sins, well, the greatest sin that the majority of our people is about to commit is they're gonna take the MOTB, the microchip. And that's gonna get them uh, in the nuclear destruction. That's gonna be their ultimate judgment, man. Because a lot of them are gonna get weak. A lot of them are gonna run to their master Esau and they're gonna take it. 
And the scriptures tell you in Revelation 14 and 9, if you take that, that's it. You will be part of that indignation, which is the righteous anger of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, man. All right. Let's go up. Let's get 2 Corinthians. We're going to get 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Then we're going to go to verse 8. And it says, We are confident, I say, and willing to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Everybody has to appear before Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to be judged, whether it's a wicked judgment or a righteous judgment. Either way, we all got to appear before the Lord. All right. So with that being said, with us being in the truth, we got to make sure that we on point. We got to make sure when we're in front of the Lord, you know, spiritually, because when these things go down, when Jacob's trouble happens and everything, this is going to be uh, this is going to be him spiritually or us spiritually being in front of the Lord to see what we're going to do when times get rough. He's going to see like, OK, we're going to see if uh, we're going to take the C hip. He's going to see. If um uh, uh we deny him when when trouble starts, all of these things are gonna happen, man. All of it. But the thing is, we got to keep our integrity and we got to keep faith. We got to remember these scriptures, man, and remember what the Most High said. If we follow His word, He said, if we endure to the end, we shall be saved. We got to believe that, man. Verse eleven it says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto the Most High, and our trust also are made manifest in your consciences. All right. So knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. When you, when we see things like this, we bring this out and we upload it for everybody to see, because this is terror of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Look at this. Look at that, man. Look at this. <laughs> this is terror right here. And we persuading men through what? Through the scriptures. When we see things like this, man. Over with. Over with. When we see things like that, this is us getting in the spirit and we immediately be like, look, man, we got to give, uh, give the warning, man. Upload the video. Let's speak about it real quick. Whether it's a quick video like this one, or whether it's a whole lesson that just like the one I'm doing right now, all right? We instantly just be like, no, man, look, understand what the will of the Most High is. This is his will. It's to destroy America, man, and to destroy it completely. So, yes, knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We like, look, man, do you really want to be part of this? Do you really want to have that much pride? You really want to be a part of this world that bad to the point where you jeopardize yourself and actually get to the point where you may actually be a part of that nuclear destruction? Is whatever you're doing in life that serious to the point where you can't let it go and repent? Ain't nothing that important, man. The only thing that's important is this truth. Point blank, period. This is all we care about. This is all we know. <laughs> It's all we want to be a part of. We don't care about nothing else, man. We just want to be saved and get away from that. We're going to get Nahum chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 1. It says, The burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkishite, the Most High is jealous, and the Lord revenge it. The Lord revenge it and is furious. The Lord, the Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. That's right. The Most High is jealous. Here it is. When the chip is um, mandatory, a lot of you all are going to run to Esau and make him your God. That's going to make the Mosai super jealous, and it's going to get him to the point where it's going to piss him off to the point where he's going to destroy you all for that, man. Because you all chose your slave master rather than the power. All right. Verse 3, it says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. All right? He's slow to anger. He's given us time to get right. 
He's giving us his, he's giving us this grace period right now. All right. He is very merciful. He is. But at the same time, if you don't get right on time, he's going to get rid of you. It says he rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry and dry up, drive up all the rivers. But Sean languisheth in Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. The mountains quake at him and the hills melt and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? Or who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him. What you gonna do when the time of his indignation comes around, man? How you gonna stand against that? How you gonna escape it? It says, who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire. <laughs> and the rocks are thrown down by him. And he's literally getting ready to take this place out by fire this time. The first time was water. The second time is by fire. How you going to be able to stand against that? The only way you can go and get away from it is through the chariots. You got to work and make yourself worthy or show the most high that you are worthy to be part of that salvation, which is you being beamed up in that chariot, man. Verse 7, it says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. All right? So darkness are, is getting ready to come upon his place. Two-thirds of his own people is, is enemies toward the Most High, man. He does not like two-thirds of his own people. He's going to love you in the kingdom when you come back. But right now, man, he can care less. He like, they not thinking about me. So I'm not going to think about them when that trouble comes. And you can read about that in Proverbs chapter 1. Tells you that he's gonna laugh at your calamity, he's gonna mock when your fear coming. Alright? He's not gonna he's not gonna feel bad when them nuclear missiles hit your ass, man. He's gonna be looking down and he's gonna be and, and he just gonna just gonna allow it to happen, man. He's gonna give orders to the angels on the left hand side. And like I said, he's gonna allow that pain to go through a lot of these people, man. A lot of them. Because a lot of you all chose not to get right. Let's get Zechariah. We'll get Zechariah chapter 14. Go to verse 12. And it says, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord. It's a lot here. It says, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold everyone, everyone on the hand of his neighbor, Salakia, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. All right. So it says that flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. What is this? This is the body melting. All right. Something's going to be so hot to the point where your tongue is going to melt, your eyes are going to melt, your flesh is going to melt, all right? And what's that's going to be? That's going to be the nuclear destruction. They show you that in um, the Terminator movie. I think it was the second one. In the Terminator movie, you know, she was um, standing at the gate, and then she saw the great flash, and everything turned orange, and then the fire came, and she put had her hands up on the gate, and then all, and her whole skin, everything about it just melted, man. So the point where you just saw nothing but bones. But this time, man, it's going to be so devastating and it's so hot, man. Even the bones going to be gone, man. Because you got to remember, this place is going to become the uh, the biggest desert once the, new, uh, the, the destruction is over. So something's going to be so hot where this is going to happen to people. This is the indignation of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. This is this this is <laughs> when you read something like this, this is letting you know that the most I ain't playing, man. He ain't he ain't about no games. He like, look, if you don't get right, I'm gonna allow this to happen to you, man. He's gonna make this happen to you. And a lot of people gonna know that this is the Lord that's doing it to him. They gonna know. Because they like the scriptures say. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. You can read that in the book of Ezekiel. Everybody's going to know, man, because we've been giving out the warning for a long time, starting with the apostles. We've been saying that this day is coming. It's right around the corner. Get right, man. Get right. 
But we already know the majority of our people, they not gonna do it. They not gonna do it because they believe in America. So go ahead, believe in your slave master system, man. <laughs> believe in it. Let's see what happens when the judgment finally comes around the corner, man. Let's get one last scripture to close, uh, close it out. We're gonna get 2 Peter chapter three. Go to verse nine. And it says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but it's long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. All right, this is the day of the Lord. The great noise, the nuclear missiles, when it hits this place, it's going to be a big boom, man. The great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The waters are going to be uh, dried up. The air is going to be gone. Like, you, you know, it, a lot of things are going to happen, man. Air polluted, water gone, people, animals, everything is just going to be gone, man. All right. Fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? What type of person are you supposed to be knowing that this day is right around the corner? Are you supposed to be a person that still want to be a nigga? You still want to be a rapper? Still want to be a singer? Still want to try to be successful in this life? Still thinking about getting married, having a wedding? What you going to do in five years? Get your 401k together? All of those different things? Is this what you should be thinking about? Or should you be thinking about getting right with the Lord, knowing that this place is about to be destroyed, man? Verse 12, it says, Looking for and hasting until the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens, shall, the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Meaning, do what you're supposed to do by your how about Shem Yahushai so you can be forgiven and you can uh, reach salvation. And it says, an account of the lost suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto you, him hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. All right. So knowing that since we have this knowledge, we have these mysteries, the most I uh, revealed these secrets unto us, what type of person should we be knowing that this, this day is about to happen right here? This is literally going to happen. Whether people want to believe it or not, this is what's getting ready to go down, man. That's what's getting ready to happen, man. All right. Whether you want to believe it or not, this is going to be the end all be all. All right. This is not going to be a thing where you can have some type of your money is going to help you out. You're going to have bunkers or you're going to be able to fly away or whatever the case may be, man. If you took that C hip, if you took that chip, or if you wasn't right with the Lord before this day comes, you're going to be up in here, man. It's going to happen because this place is wicked. It's getting worse and worse every day, man. And the Lord's getting ready to get rid of it. He's getting ready to clean up the earth. And he's going to clean it up with fire. All right. So just like I remember Apostle Gabar always saying, man, when the Passover comes around, he always say, look, when the Passover comes around, he said, brothers, they get serious because they know for seven days, which is completion, 
They know for seven days that they got to discipline themselves and uh, get even more locked in the spirit with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. He said, you, you should keep that same mindset all year round. The Passover mindset should be upon your spirit every day, man, even when the Passover is over. Because ultimately, the Most High is looking for soldiers. Scripture speak about that too. He's looking for soldiers who's going to literally fight and endure and acknowledge Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. He's looking for the ones that's going to acknowledge him, man, and his son. So with that being said, man, look, <laughs> this is something I want to be playing around with, man. We already know this ain't nothing we want to be a part of. Fuck all that, man. I ain't got time. Every time when I feel like, you know what, I, you know, I do a video tomorrow or, you know, when demons mess with you, man, you know, demons can mess with your mind and be like, you'll be okay. You know, just chill out or whatever. Do what, you know. Whatever the case may be, first thing I think about is the fear of the Lord, man. I think about this and I think about other things. I'll be like, nope, nope, nope. Got to let that spirit rule over this flesh, man. Like the, the scriptures say, the, the flesh is, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We got to make sure the spirit overrules us, man. The scriptures speak about uh, you ruling your house, which is yourself. All right. If you can't rule yourself, how can you be a servant of, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah? So we got to buckle down, man, because literally Jacob's trouble is right around the corner and this is going to end it all. So get right with the Lord, man. Get right with the Lord. So I hope this is edifying. So with that, I'm going to say, call Halayim Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstones and learn this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth. Within truth and sincerity, and shalom to the Akwat that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratazah, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala, keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.